going on everybody? I'm coming today with what I will call the give it a shot estate sale. I got about, I don't know, maybe eight to ten lots off of this estate sale here. And they didn't have a ton of photos, so I didn't have a huge amount of information to go off of, but I was lucky enough to get a whole bunch of these lots for the minimum bid, which is a dollar, obviously. So I, I just put down a dollar on like 20 lots, and I ended up walking away with like about eight of them for a dollar. And uh, then one final lot where I was able to get a great Kennedy toolbox stuffed full of tools. So we'll go over that at the end. But in the meantime, we'll go over all these tool lots that I got for a dollar each, and we'll see how I did. So I'd like to start out with the power tool, a Makita. Nice big old Makita box. <clears throat> all right, so this is one dollar. I mean, this is obviously an old, old Makita, probably I don't know, early 2000s, probably 20 years old. Maybe a little less than that. Battery, you know, no charge. Who knows if it'll take a charge, but for $1, it's worth a shot, right? If I can find a charger for that, we'll see if it can still work. And if it can still spin, it's worth a dollar. Next up, we got three... Black and Decker batteries. No idea if they work. No tools to go with them. No charger. Just take a shot. Shot in the dark. To me, just about anything's worth taking a shot for one dollar. So. so that's it for the power tools. Let's get into some hand tools. I got this lot here for the low, low price of a dollar. So we got two of these. What's even the proper name for these things? Sparking, spinning jiggers. What's the proper name? Oh, look at that, Craftsman. Craftsman crown logo and, what is that, Oxwall? Oxweld? I don't know. The heck is this thing? What is that? Somebody knows what that is. Help me out. Somebody help me out. Little plastic scraper. Nothing to it. Another little scraper. Cornwell. It's kind of nice. It is pink. And there's this Eagle Pump Oiler. Five ounce capacity made in the USA. Made in West Virginia. That's cool. I love these oilers, man. You know, I, I see some people posting online whenever they get either the like pop bottom oilers or these kind of oilers. Like, oh, what am I going to do with it? Well, put some oil in it. And then whenever you have parts to oil or anything, you know, whether it's your lawnmower or some farming equipment or even the hair trimmer when you're, uh, you know, if you cut your own hair, you can use that. Again, one dollar. Next up, we got a saw a lot. A couple of blades. We got a coping saw. We got like a little drywall saw here. This handle is two or three pounds. This is a very heavy duty handle. Old school, like solid metal handle. Klein tools. There you go. Made in the USA. Nice. Just a regular old hacksaw. This one's real special. Blue Ridge. Probably one of the lowest quality tools you could ever own. That's a Target tool brand. And then one of these. I've seen these before. It's missing something. A 
I have one of these. It's missing the um, tensioner, the tensioner rod, and the uh, thing at the back, Klein and Sons. It's very heavy. It, it, it's a, actually a lot heavier than, than the other one I have. So the other one I have must be like aluminum or something. This is clearly like solid steel. So maybe I could like cannibalize the parts from that other one. The rod on this one's a little crooked. I wonder if I could cannibalize the parts and uh, make one of these that I could restore. That is just a cool old piece of equipment. All right, next we got this little like baking dish of nut drivers. Give me one second to get it all organized and we'll see what we got. All right, here we are. So we've got some um, just Taiwanese bench top, I think that says. A couple nut drivers. These are some other like hard handled Taiwanese nut drivers. This is just a random made in the USA. Horrible shape. Got a couple great necks. USA. Nice shape. Looking good. And a couple craftsmen. No. All right. Let's clear that off and get the next one up. Old big bin full of Lord knows what. It comes to stuff like that. Cords, technology, anything like that. As soon as it's old enough to put in a bin or put in a box, to put in the closet, to put in the basement, as soon as it gets to that point, just throw it away. So, let's see if we did better with this box. Uh, this box has a little more promise upon first glance. All right, let me throw you on fast forward and see what we got here. All right, so again, the principle of if you think you, if, if there's even a hint of you thinking you might never use it again, definitely throw it away because the vast majority of that bin was total garbage, but I was able to get definitely $1 worth out of this one. The last one with the electronics, eh, I don't know if that was even worth my time. This one, not too shabby. We got some, just some like, tubing here with some joints that might be worth my time a little bit of just random like i don't know washing machine parts whatever a whole bunch of uh these Irwin bits these Irwin woodworking bits those are cool i got some long i got a long bit here nice long one i got some uh these long um locking bits so those are cool that right there is a great uh, great grab i think those are cobalt i think i saw cobalt on there um a couple like ryobi those like extender those are dewalt and a ryobi um extending like screw holding extensions there i don't know what the heck this is united Shoe Machine Corporate West Medway Mass. I don't know what that is. Uh, we've got some hacksaw blades, some random bits, pieces here, a whole bunch of um, bits. So that's great. Usable, like brand new bits. Some more car parts. Uh, just random hardware and stuff. And then this thing, I don't know what this is, Drill Doctor? Drill Doctor 350. It's got like a, a grinding thing on the inside. I, I was looking at this, I'm like, what on earth do you stick down in there that, that grinds on that round round wheel? I have no idea. Somebody knows. What is this? Tell me. Moving on. All 
right, what do you say we cleanse the palate with something that I know will be good? And that is a Home Depot bucket full of sanding products. Again, one dollar. All this was one dollar. So this is what we got. So we got a whole big stack of these Easy View grinder discs. Put them here. We'll see how they work. Got a whole bunch of cutoff wheels. There's a big um, like stone wheel in here. Some of these like six inch uh, flap discs and cutoff wheel. Just some grinding discs here. 3M. Those are good. A couple of random things, and then uh, another uh, wire wheel for an angle grinder. So, well worth a dollar, I'd say. So, let's move on to, last but not least, the big one. Not in 100% best shape. I've got the, uh, the drop front that covers the, the drawers. Um, so, let me make some room and we'll go through what we got. All right, so this top is totally stuffed. Um, like a lot of the things we've been going through, this person clearly hoarded a lot of stuff. Let me see if, it, see if I can pick through a few things here and find something good. Alright, again, just dusty as can be, but here we are. So, we got these things. I don't know what these are. Some sort of crimping and splitting tool. Is that a wire splitting tool? Must be. Yeah. Or a, a wire, um, you know what I mean. All right, we got a Stanley USA. We got an Exolite Phillips. A Stanley 12 foot power lock. A little USA made SK. Cool. Tiny little mini slip joint pliers. And a couple X lights here. Old as the hills. So this is one of those nut driver sets where it uh you put it inside the handle and gives you leverage. And then this is a hex set. That one's a little uh, wonky, but yeah. And then, oh man, everything is just covered in a layer of dust. And then we got a set of L hex keys, Chesco from Upland PA. All right, let's get on to the second set of drawers. All right, I'll kind of go through these drawers quickly here. We'll see what we got. Start on the left-hand side. This is an old, um, I believe that's dime alloy. Diamond. You can't quite see it there, but I, I have another pair with the same handle, same sort of 
a small style. You can kind of see the dime alloy there. It's a little bit worn away, but you can just see it on the top. Uh, a lot of nonsense in this drawer. Let's go over here. All right, markers, pen, there's nothing special. Okay, exacto knife, a couple drill bits, an old Hewlett Packard ball end. Those are kind of cool. Nothing special. Right, on we go. Some old barely functioning uh, wire strippers. Marshall. What's in here? What's in there? Teeth. Shark's teeth. What is this? I don't know what that is. No idea. Axolite. No name. Precision, something or other. I don't know. There's no bit in there. Mm. Like a little nail punch, center punch. Some tweezers. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, tell you what, let me get all these out and then we'll take a look at them. Right, so just a quick organization here. We got some more Exolite nut drivers, basically mostly Exolite um, screwdrivers. We got a couple long handled or a long shaft Exolite Phillips heads. These are kind of cool. We have an Eklund Allen wrench, a little uh, extendable magnet here. A couple of little things. I'm moving right along. All right, the last drawer appears to be the pliers drawer. Let me do another triage session and we'll come back to you here in a second. So here's what, we, what we've got from the pliers drawer. A couple more long screwdrivers. Just a couple random slip joint pliers, adjustables, some small nippers. We got one of these uh, ratcheting Stanley little one and two Phillips things. These are real cool. And then we've got... Uh, some pliers here, some slip joint pliers. This is an old craftsman. That's nice. And then three, you know, at, at first glance, really rough looking dime alloy slip joint pliers. They're all dime alloy. All three of them. I, and I don't know what the heck this guy was doing with these, this masking tape on the end, but they're all taped off. So I'm gonna take that off, get them cleaned up, but these will be three decent pairs of diamond slip joint pliers. All right, let me get it cleaned up once more and we'll do a quick wrap up and then put this long, long video to an end.
inside one of the drawers of the box, I found a couple photographs of some old electrical control panels for some kind of antenna system that this guy was working on in Egypt in 1987. And then in another drawer, I found a name badge from Lockheed Sanders, which I believe is what Lockheed Martin used to be called. So clearly this guy was some sort of machinist or electrical worker at uh, the Lockheed Defense Contractor here in uh, southern New Hampshire. There's also one in northern Massachusetts. So overall, it's a very nice box. It's in pretty good condition. Some of that felt liner inside of the drawers is in a little rough shape, but it is the original liner, so I'll leave it the way it is. Drawers are all oiled up. They are all really smooth. It's one of the nice things about these boxes is just how smooth those drawers are. And there's that nice Kennedy signature. I wasn't able to find a whole lot of information about the box, but it was a popular box back in the 50s and 60s. Made in the USA, really nice quality. I was able to get one for the low price of $37 from this estate auction. And there it is with uh, most of the tools I got out of it. Really happy to have it. Gonna put it right in my shop, put it right to use. And just a heads up for next video, we're going to go over some of the tools for basic carpentry, basic carpentry tools. I got a family member who's starting out soon, so we're going to go over what I have for them.